He's a professor at Tehran University and joins me now. Professor, uh, as we know, this is not an isolated incident. We are seeing a gradually increasing pattern of these tit-for-tat actions by both countries. Where could this be headed and what are the risks? Well, it's not tit-for-tat. These are acts of Israeli aggression with U.S. support. Iran has not targeted Israeli nuclear installations. Iran has not uh, carried out uh, assassinations inside Israel. And in fact, the ships that the, that the Israeli regime has hit uh, were numerous. And it's only recently that the Israeli regime is, uh, its own ships are being targeted. So this is, there's no you know, moral equivalence here. Uh, but it is a dangerous game that the Israelis are, Israelis are playing. The damage in the Iranian nuclear installation through sabotage was not as extensive as uh, was said in the Western media, but it was dangerous because it could have led to contamination. People could have been severely affected by, uh, by such contamination. Yet we see that the Europeans and the Americans will not condemn Israel, let alone uh, sanction them, but rather what they what they are doing is they're trying to increase pressure on Iran so that Iran will capitulate and appease Western powers and give them more than than what was agreed upon, but that won't happen. What does this attack mean for Iran in that Israel has been able to prove that it can disrupt the Iranian nuclear program? Well, the Israelis on their own don't have any real capability in previous occasions, and it is ex as it is suspected on this occasion as well, the Israeli regime uses U.S. military bases that surround Iran, as well as U.S. Um, uh, diplomatic compounds and embassies. And uh, it is believed that they also have had intelligence from Western uh, diplomats as well as people within the IAEA in the past. So it's not extraordinary for uh, attacks to be carried out, terrorist attacks to be carry out, carried out in different countries. But I think that Iranian patience has been wearing thin for quite a while. And the only reason why the Iranians have been uh, restrained so far is because they wanted to see what will happen in the U.S. elections and whether the U.S. will get serious about the nuclear deal. But if the Iranians see that the Americans are using such tactics to put pressure on Iran, because remember, the American uh, Secretary of Defense entered Israel literally hours after the attack. Obviously, there's coordination. The Israelis wouldn't embarrass their closest ally uh, with an attack if, without informing them before such a trip. So if the Americans continue to put pressure on Iran and try to create damage to the country and the Europeans aid the Americans by sanctioning people uh, and the Iranians feel that they're not going to abide by their obligations in the nuclear deal, then the Iranians will start behaving differently and uh, there will be consequences for those regimes that carry out attacks against Iran. As far as those consequences, Iran has vowed to take revenge at a time of its choosing. I mean, what could all of this likely mean uh, in terms of could it potentially risk all those efforts to revive the JCPOA? Well, the Iranians have already said very explicitly that uh, it is willing to go back to the deal. And Iran has a history of abiding by its commitments in full. The IAEA has said that repeatedly. The United States has never done so. The United States under Obama, they cheated Iran. They never abided by their obligations in full. That's why under Obama, the Iranians never had access to the international financial system, even though that was promised in the deal. And then, of course, under Trump, it was, the agreement was torn altogether. So it's the U.S. that has to prove that it's honest. And the Iranians are saying that unless the United States and its European allies fulfill their obligations in full, this time around, they're not going to see Iran abide by its commitments. Iran is not going to repeat what happened a few years ago where it did what it was supposed to do and the other side didn't. So if the U.S. is willing to behave like a normal country and abide by its obligations, then we have a deal. Otherwise, they have nothing. And the world is changing. The Iranians know that the United States does not have the sort of power that it had before. 
Biden is facing many difficulties at home and abroad, and Iran is uh, is breaking through many of these sanctions. So while it is difficult for Iran, the situation is not like it, what it was in 2015. Okay, we'll leave it there. Mohammed Morandi in Tehran. Thank you.